morning. morning. Welcome to Good Samaritan Church. Whether you're online or in person, we're so happy you're here. Uh, we will have our music found in our leaflets, and I think there's an online way to get that. We'll begin with the processional, hymn number 388. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. 
And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of thongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now read responsibly Psalm 138, which you can find on page 6 of your order of service. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word among all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when you have heard the words of my mouth. They will sing the ways of the Lord that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the first letter. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for your sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. <clears throat> For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our sequence hymn. Here I am, Lord. I love this. And I'll play guitar. <laughs> Oh. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out just a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowd from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Stan and I were just talking about that song is the one, right? That has called so many of us into our direct personal relationship with Christ. And for many of us, it's been a generation ago, practically, right? <sighs> Thank you, Stan. Well, have you ever noticed that when God wants to get someone's attention, he does some kind of a big deal thing? You know, think of Moses in that burning bush, for instance. <laughs> and today, from Isaiah, Jim, thank you for your reading. Oh, my gosh. This image that Isaiah had of these seraphs, you know, were, were angels and cherubs that we see is not at all what these guys look like. Can you imagine they had these six wings? Two cover the eyes, two cover the private and feet and down here. And meanwhile, they're flying around with two of them while they're doing all that. And I want to know, using tongs myself with an opposable thumb, how did they grab those tongs and get that live charcoal off into uh, touch the lips of Isaiah to cleanse him from all his sin. Oh my gosh. Whew. What a deal.
vision of possibilities of God coming to one who felt unworthy. And then because of God <laughs> using all that he had to get Isaiah's attention, Isaiah paid attention, listened, understood he was a forgiven person. <laughs> and when he heard God say, whom shall I send? Isaiah said, here am I, Lord, send me. Now the lives of Peter, James, and John, who were fishing successfully some days and not so successfully other days out on the Sea of Galilee, also called the Neresek, same place. God got their attention in a very different, everyday kind of way. They were just out doing their job. When Jesus comes along and he starts, I kind of need your boat there. And Jesus asks for something, gets their attention, said, well, okay, we're done today, so yeah, sure, take my boat. And after a bad day of not catching a thing, after he preached, reaching out to, we don't know, hundreds maybe, Jesus said to Peter, now go back out there and cast your nets. Now, I'm like Peter. I think I'd push back and say, no, come on. I worked all day. I didn't catch anything. We've already been out there. Maybe he's wondering, you're from Nazareth. What do you know about fishing? You know, there might be some of that. And, he, and yet, something inside of Peter says, hmm, okay, I guess I'll do that. And then they get the biggest catch of their lives. In Luke, this is, this is like what John did when water turned to wine. Jesus just says, go to the thing, and then the miracle happens. And this abundant catch of fish is an opportunity for Jesus to say, not only can we feed everybody to follow me, but guess what? You're going to convert all these other people into being followers of the God of Israel because this catching is about saving souls. And they just drop their nets and go. Peter, and probably his brother Andrew, James and John. Here am I, Lord, send me. And then we have Paul. I'm always intrigued with the work that happens under Paul. Now remember, uh, Paul is someone who was on a path as a fully trained rabbinical teacher, a Pharisee at the top level of all the training, when Saul was on his way to go to persecute more Christians. And how did God get his attention? Right? We know. The risen Lord came to him. Remember, Paul did not know Jesus in the flesh, as he says in today's part of Corinthians, for one untimely born. He missed out on Jesus in the flesh. But what's interesting to me is in addition to this instant moment of, oh my gosh, a flash of truth and light and, and, and everything that could put me, literally stop me in my tracks from persecuting Christians and doing this evil thing, not only did it turn him around, doing a complete 180, God picked somebody who already had worked hard his whole life to be educated, to learn the way of the, as it were, preparation for this moment, the preparation through the rabbinical teachings that he received, uh, as he claims in, out of the book of Acts, we hear from, from Luke, that Paul had been sent to learn under the number one rabbi of the day named Gamaliel. So he had all that Hebrew text understanding, rules, everything that goes with being, you know, it would be like being a bishop or something to us, someone with all of the full training. And a young man enough to also have a lot of interest and ability to work hard. And so Paul says, you know, 
I may not have known Jesus in the flesh, but I worked even harder than those guys did. I think, I think some of Peter and some others might say, wait a minute. We walked for three years alongside. We worked pretty darn hard. But Paul's argument is that he worked any harder than any of them because in addition to the lifetime of training that he had, in addition to the fact that he was born in the Greek portion of Tarsus, where he was considered a Greek citizen and learned all the Greek philosophy, rhetoric, knowledge of what the Greek world had to offer. And in this person of Paul, worked hard for three years following the conversion, going none other than going on to Damascus, where he had intended to kill Christians. And those very Christians that he had targeted became his mentors. They, can you imagine that situation? And, and you know, they got their vision of, no, you have to receive this man. But there they were, knowing that Saul was on his way to persecute, and then they were told, mm, no, you're going to receive him, and you're going to teach him. That is the ultimate love your enemy moment, when you can openly follow what God says and then put who you are with your training. And those early disciples spent three years training Paul in the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. And God was able to put all that package together in this person we know as Paul, who worked hard, I would say. He can claim that he worked harder than all in a certain sense. Because following those three years, he got another 20 to 30 years of developing the Christian church as we know it. And all these beautiful letters that he wrote to the different congregations as they dealt with their challenges. One of the other things that you have to know about Paul is he would have had an understanding of the Greek culture when you read in 1 Corinthians 9, I think it is, just a little earlier than this passage, he refers to um, the Gentile world as ways that people can go after the prize of following, giving your all. He would have been using, in this language, understanding what the Greek world would have known about such practices as running races. He literally wrote, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize, right? The Olympia, which, of course, Paul probably had witnessed. And here we are a couple thousand years later, and we're watching real time these days another manifestation of what the trained people who are in the Olympics are doing when they give everything, all that they have, to being the best athlete, the best one to get the prize. And one of the things that a uh, priest friend of mine who got a classics degree before becoming a priest understands the Greek language well, he says, you know, Mary, don't forget that the word the Greeks used for an Olympiad, as we would call them now, was the word agonistus. Agonistus. One who agonizes internally and externally in their training to become the champion who then becomes the athlete, which is the one who gets the prize. Now, all of that is going on in Paul and his writing to the people of Corinth who are of the Greek world. It's huge to me that the insights of what Paul is calling Christians to do when they say, here I am, Lord, follow me, is to give their all in every respect. Internally, turn their heart to God. Externally, work out. And I've been enjoying, how many have watched anything of the Olympics so far? Yay, all right. Anybody watch Nathaniel Chen? Nathan Chen, who is from Salt Lake 
city, Utah. He's the most beautiful male figure skater together person when he has the moment, all right? And what I've learned about this young man, 22 years old, is he was born just before the Olympics in his home city. He lived within five minutes of the ice rink. Age three, he began. His entire life, you know, he didn't know exactly where it would go, but was it included being on the ice. It included ballet. It included um, music where, you know, bringing all the elements of artistry and hard work. Now, he was good enough to make it to the 2018 games. But he had something happen that happens to humans. <laughs> you get there, it's your turn, and he basically crashed and burned on his first freestyle male figure skating. But this young man had the fortitude to say, I got to keep moving, and was able to kind of pull out enough of his good stuff to add to the team so they got a bronze medal as a team in 2018. And rather than being defeated and, and letting it haunt him that he kind of blew it in his first Olympics, he went back into his training, into the discipline. He was a disciple of the training for his athletic ability, which also included attitude change in his mind about not being so obsessed with perfection, but just being doing all the hard work in advance and then being there in the moment, being in touch. So back this last weekend, just within the last 24 hours or so, he was back on the ice, men's freestyle as a team, and he got on there and he was completely, fully engaged very minor mistakes only. Now, I'm inspired by this. I'm inspired by what it means for people who have the means to do it, which I, he knows he's very blessed to have a family and a circumstance. Both parents having been born in China, came to the U.S., worked their way. His father's a, a professor of pharmacology or something really significant in the U.S. And he had the means to have the support but he gave himself, here am I, send me. Which meant, like Paul did, having to work harder than anyone else. Now the reason I am encouraged by this is we're living through a very difficult time with this last couple of years and the challenges all churches have across the board. In fact, I would venture to say, because I have a lot of Jewish friends, a few Muslim friends, all gatherers of worship have been challenged. And we have this unknown time, like when is it going to end and when can we be as we mean to be, as we're intended to be, as a community of faith together gathering and serving our community. And so this is a hard time. Add to that your transition with a rector, and whew, it's tough. But what I'm inspired by, by Paul's writing and by the Olympiads that are out before us today, is this notion that every day can be a day in which we are, quote, working for the Lord. Every day even when it feels like we're closed out of everything else in our lives, we can stop, we can pray, we can connect differently with one another. So I wanted to offer for you an opportunity to recognize for yourself as an individual, for your faith community collectively, that a good practice for those who are reaching for the, as it were, spiritual Olympics <laughs> of being church in the 21st century, that our own Book of Common Prayer, which sadly you don't get to have in your pews now, but maybe you can borrow one or something. If you don't have it, take it. Maybe, I don't know if I'm 
again our turn here, but we'll work something out with the senior warden. And in it, on page 832, is a prayer I remember someone pointing to me back in the days when I was in formation, so like 30 years ago, say this prayer every day or at least weekly. And then you get in life and you kind of go to the other stuff, right? But another priest of uh, the Episcopal Church doing inner ministry training shared with a community, and I was included in this this week, don't forget the prayer of self-dedication. I'm going to say it to you, and then I'm going to ask that we um, have it available to you going forward somehow, if you like this. Ready? And this, would, this we can do as individuals or as a community. I offer this so that we all can become strong in our faith and in our belief in calling where God is sending us. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, and so fill our imaginations, so control our hearts that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand and proclaim our faith using the Nicene Creed found on page 11 of your order of service. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was dead. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Praise of the people for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Taught by God's word, we pray for the church and the world, saying, Lord have mercy for peace in all lands and in the hearts of all people, we pray. Lord have mercy. For all who are Christians, that they may be strong in their love and faith and may work together for greater unity, we pray. Lord have mercy. For those preparing for ministry and for all who guide them, that they may be teachers of God's light and love, we pray. Lord have mercy. For all members of our civic community, that we may live together with justice and understanding, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for the dead and the bereaved, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For God's care and healing for those who have been commended to our prayers. From the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for 
parish administrators, accountants, secretaries, and all the office assistants and volunteers behind the scenes who make our worship and ministry possible. We pray for our groups that meet here, Alcoholics Anonymous, Al-Anon, Gamblers Anonymous, Midori Bonsai, Westside Sunnyman Preschool, San Jose, Yangnak Korean Presbyterian Church. For people whom we are holding in prayer, for Lynn, Cecilia, Frances, Sandra, Debbie, Mac, Jerry, Penny, Margaret, Don, Barbara, Jane, Carl Grot, Al, Yvonne, Carla, Maggie, Nick, Kit, Sharon, Bill, Ava, Angie, Barbara, Eileen, Bob Hedges, Laurel, Katie, Cindy Thompson, Bob King, and Doris Martinez. Thanking God for all our many blessings for the ordination anniversary of Sheldon B. Hutchinson and Bruce R. Bramlett. For the departed, praying for those whom we love and we no longer see. John Subia, Jenny, Alonzo, Eric, Mike, Walter, Adeline, Augie, Donna and Frank Adams, John and Jane Adam Felix, Kitty, Beverly, Van, Atlee, Chung, Craig, D, Doug Dean, Bob and Don Lawson. Is there anyone else or anything else we should pray for? Pray for safe travel for my husband Jim Lawson uh, as he travels to Mexico for first major business trip since by uh, the people. I pray also in thanksgiving for uh, the ministry of Reverend Dr. Wendy Smith, who will be celebrating 45 years in her nation, one of the first women to be ordained in the Episcopal Church. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And as we've said, we're not allowed to send the plate around for our offerings to be placed in them, but uh, there is a box on your way in where you can do that, or online, I think you can find another way to give offerings, which are much appreciated <laughs> and much needed. Oh God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power, because you have created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
this holy Eucharist to the glory of God. The special intention is that we can hear God's call and say, here am I, Lord, send me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of all life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and holding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Join with them in giving them voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. 
Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you. We give thanks to you and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with the Good Samaritan, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
I would like to um, offer the prayer of spiritual communion for those who are not able to be at this altar in person. You're invited to realize the presence of Jesus in your soul and make your act of spiritual communion. And we pray with you as we pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. And remember in particular our own Tara, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, and for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and we pray you come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. 
Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And let us pray the post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll have our announcements now. I wanted to let you know that I will ask Rachel to put that prayer in an email and send it out, and also to have paper copies put into our bulletins each week, because that touched my heart. Thank you so much, and I know it touched all of yours. Also, uh, we are looking for a volunteer to own the ministry of SMOM. Um, Doris is no longer able to do it, and, and all it would require is for you to work with them on two projects a year the school um, backpacks, and then the Christmas tree uh, giving, and then maybe once a month take some clothes over to them. So if you can, if you find an, an, an opportunity in your heart to serve that way, please let me know. Thank you. I just wanted to share uh, an email that uh, Lynn Park sent me in response to me sending her one yesterday. She says, hi Stan, thank you for your positive note of support. I certainly didn't need this to happen, blank screen, uh, uh, but I know I need to keep a positive attitude. Since it's a very bad break, the surgeon has informed family and me no weight bearing for three months. Craig is working on finding a facility that can help me with my needs. Still have the two-year cat wound that needs daily bandage changes by qualified nurse, so that adds a glitch. Prayers needed. Take care then. Keep the prayers coming. And the cards. Remember, there's still cards back there um, if you want to write one. And so we offer a final blessing, holding all these things and even more in our hearts. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those around us. So be swift to love. Make haste to do kindness. Shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And let us finish with hymn number 660, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, let us go forth in the name of Christ.